May is going to be an exciting month. Earnings started to come out in the last few weeks and despite the pandemic, my favorite companies are looking good. Of course, there are still few more reports due for this week, but that is not really the focus of this video. It is the start of the month, which means that it is time for new top 5 stocks list. Hello everyone and welcome back to Investing with Antoinette. In today's video, I'll give you my top 5 stocks for May. Before we dive right in, I just want to give you a quick reminder to like, share and do all the good stuff that helps our little community grow here in YouTube. Last year around this time, when I created my first investing video, I mentioned 5 tech stocks that I believe every serious long-term investor should consider for their portfolio. Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple and Microsoft. And it should come as no surprise that a couple of these businesses are on my list for this month as well. Of course, I've added a couple of other stocks as well because one, diversification is absolutely crucial for long-term investing and two, we can't just keep talking about the same five companies month after month, yes? No matter how good they are, it will just get boring eventually. A quick side note before we continue, I have been thinking about creating a few playlists dedicated to specific stocks. When it comes to the bigger businesses, there is a lot of history, trends and management stuff that we can look at, so there would be enough material for at least 10 or so videos. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see something like this on my channel. And if there is enough interest, I will see it if I can make it happen. And now, alright, let's get back on track, shall we? Today we're gonna talk about Amazon, Facebook, Shopify, Apple and Fiverr. And let's start. And if you stay with me till the end of this video, I have a big bonus for you. Some extra stocks that you can consider too. Let's start with Amazon. Amazon is a multinational e-commerce and tech giant with brilliant financials. I'm a big believer in Amazon from a long-term investment standpoint and the result in the latest report only reform my opinion. Now, the current price is 3,291.61, market cap is 1.66 trillion, P-E ratio 62.62, EPS 52.56. Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN, is currently one of the best growing stocks on the entire market. Between last March, March 23rd of 2020, and now Amazon went from 1,900 to 3,200. That is even better than the SP500, which went up by around 41% over the same period. But that shouldn't really come as a surprise since Amazon has a proven track record. Their stock price is up more than 236,000%. Now I know that there are many investors out there who think Amazon stocks is too expensive at the moment. And I agree to some extent. I have no issues adding more Amazon to my portfolio because I'm a big believer in the company's future and I've spent a lot of time reading through their reports. However, this is one of the stocks that I consider must hold. If you are going to buy Amazon stocks, you need to have the right mindset. There may be some hiccups here and there, but Amazon has demonstrated the ability to keep growing year and after, and there is no reason to believe that it's going to stop anytime soon. So yes, Amazon definitely takes the top spot in the month list. Let's go to Facebook. Current price 319.08, market cap 904.739 billion, P ratio 27 and EPS is 11.67. In my opinion, 
Facebook is one of the few big players in the tech field that are still undervalued. I am certain that this won't be the case for much longer, but meanwhile, I am happily keep adding more Facebook stocks to my portfolio. I like Facebook because they are cheaper than their competitors Google, Amazon, they've got well-established brands and different platforms, popular across all age group, Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp, they've got a massive user base between all their apps, they are investing big money into R&D, their upcoming AR and VR tech could leave their competitors in the dust. During the Q1 2021 earning calls, CEO Mark Zuckerberg shared that personally Facebook enjoys more than 2.7 billion daily users and it's used by over 200 million businesses for marketing and advertising purposes. Additionally, there are over 1 million active shops and over 250 million monthly shops and visitors. Last year, WhatsApp received a card update which has been used more than 5 million times so far. For the last couple of quarters, Facebook's managed to exceed management expectations, freeing up funds and giving them the confidence, in Zuckerberg's own words, to make big investments into the R&D side of the business. Big money has been put into the augmented and virtual reality tech to enable a deeper sense of presence in social connection. If this tech takes off, it could give Facebook an absolutely massive edge over the competition since no other platforms offer this kind of user experience. Of course, VR tech isn't taking up all the budget. Facebook is also working on improving its native commerce tools across all apps, including Instagram and WhatsApp. The latest WhatsApp update also includes expanded catalog functionality, allowing businesses to update their catalogs without needed a mobile device. Here is the stats summary. Daily active users 1.88 billion on average, average for March 2021, up 8% year over year. Monthly active user 2.85 billion on average as of March 31, 2021, up 10% year over year. Family daily active people 2.72 billion on average of March 2021, up 15% year over year. Family monthly active people 3.45 billion as of March 31, 2021, up 15% year over year. Capital expenditures of Q1 2021 is 4.42 billion, including principal payments on finance leases. Cash and cash equivalent 64.22 billion as of March 2021. Headcount is 60,654 as of March 31, up 26% year over year. And let's move to Apple. Apple, ticker symbol AAPL, current price 130.21. We've got market cap 2.17 trillion, PE ratio 29.27, EPS. 4.45 with a quarterly revenue of 89.6 billion dollars up for 54% year over year and quarterly earnings per diluted shares of 1.40 apple's latest quarterly report is looking as solid as yet the tech giant managed a record-breaking revenue performance across all geographic segments and strong double-digit growth in each product category, driving the installed base of active devices to an all-time high. And if you've been keeping a close eye on the tech field during the lockdowns, this shouldn't really come as a surprise. When everyone is stuck at home with nothing to do and almost nothing to spend money on, it is very logical to expect that the tech-related businesses are going to do really well. This works even better when it comes to Apple because their products tend to be more expensive than the available alternatives. 
Of course, when someone really wants an Apple product, they are going to get one despite the price tag, but the increase in money on hand the most people experienced during the pandemic certainly helped Apple push the numbers as quite a bit. Or as Apple CEO Tim Cook put it, the quarter reflects both the enduring ways our products have helped our users meet this moment in their own lives, as well as the optimism consumers seem to feel about better days ahead for all of us. Here is the stats summary. Quarterly revenue. 89.6 billion up 54% year over year. Quarterly earnings per diluted share 1.40. Operating cash flow 24 billion. International sales account for 67% of the quarterly revenue. And you've got some information, the source and the report that I've been reading are here. So now let's move to another a very good company, Fiverr. Ticker symbol FVRR, current price 180.33, market cap 6.46 billion, P ratio at the moment is known here on Yahoo Finance, EPS 2.29 minus 2.29. Between the lockdowns, remote work requirements, business shutdowns and personal layoffs, Fiverr's success should surprise no one. The situation is pretty simple here. Businesses will always have work that needs doing and people will always need money. The lockdown just made it so that there was more work and fewer, if any, people to do it on site. This put Fiverr in the ideal position to profit from the situation. The platform's revenue comes from both employers and gig workers for an impressive combined take rate of 27%. And when you've got over 3.4 million customers spread across more than 160 countries and 500 categories, at 27% quickly adds up. A revenue up 77% year over year. The average amount spent per buyer grew to $205, up 20% over year over year. And the report for Fiverr you can see on their website. So now my last company, which is one of my really, really favorite company. I may say Amazon is a very strong company, but one of my favorite company is Shopify. Current price, 1,108.60. Market cap, 137.647 billion. PE ratio, 86.69. EPS, 12.79. Shopify, ticker symbol SHOP, is having a fantastic time. The company published one of the most amazing first quarter financial results that I've seen lately and their stock went up more than 10%. Here is a quick rundown. 998.6 mil revenue, up by 110% year over year. Or 320.7 mil subscriptions revenue up 71%. Let's see what Harley Finkenstein, Shopify president, is saying. Please, if I don't say his name correctly, please don't mind. Our singular focus is on making entrepreneurship easier and make it easier for entrepreneurs to succeed. During this last year, digital shopping was to go to solution for most consumers and this strategy has paid off big time for Shopify. However, Management has noted that the e-commerce growth is expected to slow down as the restrictions relax and people return to their old shopping habits. Of course, this isn't the end for Shopify because, let's face it, shopping online is just much more convenient and the younger generations have already demonstrated a preference for it. So while their growth rate may slow down, management is positive that they will continue growing. And don't worry because we are not supposed to just sit there and hope for this growth to pop out of uh, thin air. Instead, management will be reinvesting heavily back into the business during the year to ensure better results moving forward. 
Given the $7.9 billion in cash reserves, I believe that Shopify can definitely make good on this forecast. We expect for year 2021 adjusted operating income to be below the level we achieved in 2020. Back when I first got into Shopify, the stock was going for 100 per share. Once it hit 300, I sold it out of the position and started building it back up not long after last year. I use Shopify for quite a few of my businesses and I'm enjoying the uh, platform and I think it's very user friendly. And because you have been with me till the end of the video, I've got few bonuses for you. My bonus stocks are Atlassian, TEAM, cloud-based business productivity with solid revenue growth of 40% in the past four years, strong cash flow and good margins. Disney, DIS, day parks, movies, on demand, streaming, services, lots of merch and a ton of extremely well-known valuable IP. Disney is definitely one of the most dominant companies in the entire entertainment field and I believe that every long-term investor should have a look at it. We talk about Disney in one of my previous videos so I will leave it a link for you down in the description so you can go back and if you want to check it the previous videos. Tattoo Chef TTCF, a vertically integrated plant-based meat substitute company that is not in direct competition with any other industry leaders. Different angles, different strategies, massive growth, incredible potential for long-term margins profitability. Sign me right up. Believe that it's only a matter of time until Wall Street and the big investors out there pick up on the stocks and the price will skyrocket. So I don't want to regret anything and I keep adding a little bit by little bit because now below 20 it's a really good price. And one of my newest investments are Coinbase Global, C-O-I-N. Coinbase, the largest crypto exchange platforms in the US, went publicly recently. Now they are trading under the ticker symbol coin and most investors, myself included, who have looked into crypto are very excited about this opportunity. And now, in closing, what I want to do, remember guys, I'm not making this list to make you invest in these companies because I invest in them. I'm simply giving you my opinions and explaining my thoughts. I like the businesses because I've done my research. I understand the models and I like the management. This one is especially important for the newbies. If you are new investors and you decide to look into the stocks that I mentioned today, please make sure that you understand them well before investing. If you don't understand a company or don't agree with the model or the management or whatever, do not give them your money. Go and find some other stocks that you like better. You don't get into long-term investing to worry about the future. You did it so you can lead a happier life, free of stress and worries and you can sleep better. I know it sounds overwhelming when you are new, but believe me, you'll get to this point in no time. Just do the research, make your purchases, and after, you are confident in the company and just hold them. And that is why I go through all of this effort to explain my reasoning and approach. Because even if you don't care about these companies, you can still benefit from the from my content. Oh, and uh, speaking of content, if you happen to like the content on my channel, you wouldn't mind letting me know with a thumbs up and a share, right? Why not go ahead and drop me a comment as well while you are there. Thanks a bunch. I really appreciate your time. And that is all I've got for you today, guys. I hope that you really enjoyed. Until next time, stay very, very motivated. I'll see you soon.